Hello everyone and welcome to World of Darkness News special after PAX West edition. I am so happy to finally be able to talk more to you about something that everyone is waiting for. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 has been re-revealed, re-announced with a new development team behind it. And today we're going to dwell deeper about everything that was covered, everything that was announced. Make sure that you are up to date with uh, what we've shared so far. But we go, before we go further, before we go into the meat and bones of the announcement, let's check out the trailer again to make sure you haven't missed anything. In the sound of the silence, I can move like the wind. With the eyes on my target, I will bloom in my sin. Wide awake like I'm dreaming. Getting closer to midnight, 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 midnight. is singing. I will wait for you. And that was the red reveal 2023 announcement trailer for Bloodlines 2. Every single thing that you were able to see in this trailer is gameplay. This is gameplay footage. And yeah, let's dwell into the updates, the, the things that were shared on the website or in the press and stuff that you may already know already, but you, if you don't know, I'm going to sum it up for you and say it for sure in here so you have the confirmed information coming from the stream. So first of all, you are able to see the new look of the game and uh, the gameplay and every single, like, Seen from this trailer comes from the gameplay itself. You might have seen a little bit more of a difference with how the game might have looked like before. This is because the game is based on Unreal Engine 5 right now and the visual fidelity is mm, so good. I'm really happy about the game, how the game looks like. I hope that you can see some of it in this trailer. And yeah, you might have also seen something interesting that caused and sparked a lot of conversation online. In Bloodlines 2, you play as a newly awakened elder. That's the playable character you are playing as the elder. And uh, there was also an interesting thing shared in one of the interviews, I believe the one with Screen Rant, in which I can say a fuller sentence, you play as an elder at odds with the voice in her head. Hmm, what that might mean? I don't know. You gotta figure it out yourself or wait for more gameplay, which is going to be shared in January in a full length gameplay video, which we're going to share then to show you more of uh, how Bloodlines 2 plays and what's in there. In between now and then, we're going to share more. There's going to be playable clans shared uh, and which clans you will be able to play, which clans will your elder be able to be in Bloodlines 2. All of them are going to be shared in between now and January's reveal. So um, keep, stay tuned. We're going to have more news for you. And uh, when it comes to the game itself, I have some snippets. So meet the power players, ally with them and decide who will rule the city. Some of the power players appeared in this trailer. You've noticed Toli the Nosferatu, for example, my favorite character, actually. <laughs> and probably a lot of people's favorite character in the future. We'll see. And uh, also at the very end, the beautiful, beautiful Lou Grant. Uh, who is an actual historical character in Seattle. I recommend reading up on her on Wiki. There's a lot of cool information about her. I actually took the underground tour in Seattle. If you're in the area, do it. You're going to learn more about the history of the city and about Lou Grant herself, who is a really interesting character. 
Uh, and actually, Lou Graham, am I saying this right? No, Grant, Grant is the right name, Grant, there we go. <laughs> it used to be, it used to be a little bit different in the, in the, in the previous iteration, but now it's All right, the real name of the historical character. Let's go, uh, more about, about the gameplay, which you could see in the trailer. You use your disciplines, you feed in the city at night, you use your supernatural powers or raw persuasion to um, use it on civilians in order to lure them into the dark alleys. Masquerade, of course, is at play. It's a Vampire the Masquerade game, and breaking the Masquerade will have consequences, both with the law enforcement and maybe if you are naughty enough with some higher powers. Uh, there are different playstyles and approaches based on the clan you choose, so we're going to dwell deeper into that in the early 2024. There's going to be more about how exactly different clans play and more gameplay shown, so uh, yeah. From right now to January, we'll reveal the clans, January gameplay, like full-blown gameplay video, and then more about the play styles and play choices and design choices on the game. Um, so yeah, release date, fall 2024. Oh my goodness, I can finally say this. We're going to share the exact release date as we launch pre-orders. So we are not going to launch pre-orders before knowing and sharing the exact release date for this game. So uh, right now you can wishlist it and that actually helps us a lot. If you go to Steam and uh, to your console store of choice and wishlist the game, this helps us a lot in knowing whether you are interested in what we're doing. Uh, uh, but we are not opening pre-orders just yet. Pre-orders are going to be open when the exact release date will drop. Uh, all right, so that's been it about Bloodlines 2 itself, but we also have more to share about the team behind it. And I want to welcome you to check out the video. Also, keep a close look on this video because not only it shares the developers, but also some really cool stuff from the game itself, like some beautiful concept art, which I think does a very good job capturing the atmosphere of Seattle in the Chinese room's Bloodlines 2. Let's check it out. All the stories we've told and I think will tell, we leave mysteries and things for people to solve. There's a maturity in our storytelling. For this project, we want to take that forward. Vampire the Masquerade is a great story IP and we're great storytellers. They're going to get the immersive, wonderful worlds they can lose themselves in, but they're going to find a lot more that we haven't done before, that is still true to us and true to our DNA and hopefully it exceeds their expectations. The first thing I thought was, wow, that's, uh, that's a pretty big project to get right. Now we've got to get it right. That was the second. Our game is powerful. Dark. Violent. Trilling. Twisty. Visceral. Visceral is a word we use a lot in the studio. Challenging. Machiavellian. Kind of heartfelt. Just, well, it's World of Darkness. I love Vampire the Masquerade because it is a dark world mirroring our own in the modern day. The atmosphere of our game is very much set in the neo noir realm. Light, which is where the living world is, is not our friend, so it should feel dangerous. I think we tread the line between the grittiness of our world and the romanticism of vampires in a really nice way. That's where I think a lot of the interesting story, or interesting of this IP is, these people who are all immortal and can kind of do whatever they like, they're all above the law, but they also want to get their own way. The thing that I like about VTM is that it's been around for so long, so so many people already have attachments to a lot of the events and a lot of the characters who exist, and this is our chance to really get in there and help make more of those memories. TCRs very well known for crafting amazing stories. With our impressive horror catalog, I truly believe that TCR is one of the best in the industry when it comes to delivering and developing compelling narratives. But as well as the story stuff, I think TCR is really good at working with narrative complementary to include atmosphere and how the narrative and the atmosphere and the art really work together. You know, that sense of atmosphere, that storytelling, that TCR twist. As my role as community manager, I have to make sure that 
people who love TCR's games understand that there is plenty of space for them to explore the characters and the stories that they've come to expect from us. In our game as well, the player is entering a world that is in a large tectonic shift and turmoil. So nothing is going to be as it was when the player arrived there. Obviously we started out making really atmospheric walking simulators, but that was our roots. And as TCR has grown, we've added in people with more experience in AAA, but then still keeping the spirit of TCR, which is, can I swear? Uh, the fucking weird. <laughs> Being a kindred is all about power how to influence this physical power. World of Darkness fans have a huge new playground for the powers, the disciplines, all of the things that they expect from a vampire game. TCR challenges the players to explore the darker aspects of vampire existence and the consequences of one's actions. Are you the kind of predator that does run in or do you crawl through the grass? That is a lot of what we're asking the players with this game. What kind of vampire are you? What makes the game special is the team making it. It's incredible to get to play around in somebody else's sandbox. Nerve wracking too. Yes. I mean, it's such a passionate fan base and we really want to do it well. Oh, I'm really hoping that they are as excited as we are because we are super excited to share the game with everybody. When you have an opportunity to work on something that you never expected to work on, you grab it with both hands. And it's been a fantastic experience with a team who are passionate in delivering something that we thought we really proud of. And we are. Well, that was the introduction of the team. The Chinese room is currently working on Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. And let me tell you, the announcement of that on PAX was unforgettable. What Mr. Storyteller Jason Carl did was so great. You can actually check it out on Twitch. I'm going to talk about it in just a minute. Um, when the very first panel of Seattle by Night happened, there was a cast of players and there was Aaron sitting them among them, not introducing himself as a member of the Chinese room. I was checking out Discord when I was sitting in the audience and people already guessed who he was before the announcement happened. And he was playing Tolly, the same Tolly which you could see in the trailer for Bloodlines 2 that I've showed before. And this character, well, he showed up, he introduced himself. There was a pretty nice iconic scene at the Gum Wall in Seattle. And then the announcement happened. Aaron was able to stand up, say who he really is, where he really works and what he works on. It was really, really cool. And yeah, you can actually check it out on Twitch. I'm going to tell you where exactly in a second. But the Chinese room is working on this game. Developers of games such as Dear Aster or Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, amazing narrative stories. But the team has grown substantially since these days. Uh, the authors of various different RPG games from around the industry of AAA games Games joined this studio in order to make this game together with the old school vibe of uh, of the Chinese room that is very much narrative driven and very much horror driven so it's going to be amazing this game is definitely not a walking simulator it's an action RPG and we're going to share more about how it plays in the gameplay video shared in January I hope that this trailer already has shown you some of the fidelity of the game how cool the combat looks like how awesome Awesome the game looks like in general but a lot of people are asking me hey but what about the story is the game is the game going to have a story is the game going to have the RPG elements that I am craving for yes wait for it wait for January wait for stuff that we're going to show because uh, um, we're not spoiling things just yet but we're going to definitely give you more information so you can make an informed decision of hey do I proto this game and hey what exactly is Bloodlines 2 and what kind of atmosphere it's going to convey I'm very happy that the team is working on this game is just very much into World of Darkness and very much into Vampire the Mask with lore. They have a lot of super cool ideas and uh, I'm also super happy personally to finally share with you the full community team working behind this game. Josh Matthews, which you can see in the video, is from the YouTube channel Strange Adventures and Gaming FTL. He was one of my favorite Bloodlines 2 coverage YouTubers back in the days when I still did that myself. 
And uh, yeah, Fiona is also back to uh, work on the community. Fiona, who was the original Prince of Bloodlines 2 Discord. You may remember her if you uh, hanged around on Bloodlines 2 Discord uh, back after the announcement. So Debbie is also working on the game on the product side. The same Debbie who played Tremere in Vain Pursuit. And this team is amazing. I'm really happy that I am able to work with them and bring you more stuff. Because there's a lot of more stuff we're going to share before January. You don't have to fall in torpor again, I promise. Uh, there's more stuff to be shared. Clans, definitely. And more little snippets here and there as we um, draw closer to the gameplay footage that we're going to show. But hey, we have more news about uh, what we shared on PAX. So let's get further into our news list. And when it comes to Bloodlines 2, also I do recommend everyone to check out Press. There's a lot of really cool online press articles and interviews with the team which share more about the team behind it, more about their thoughts about the game and uh, their vision behind it. So if you want to know more snippets, more than I'm saying right now, Press is the place to go. There are interviews on Screen Rant, on Gamer, on PC Gamer. Uh, and yeah, yeah, just check them out. Let me know and discuss, speculate and uh, uh, craft your own theories uh, both here in the chat, in the comments and on Discord because it's always awesome to see what you folks are thinking. I would love to know more about what you think on the game. I've been reading Reddit, Discord, forums. I've been everywhere just to see um, the reactions to the trailer. And yeah, cannot wait to share you more to fuel these reactions and fuel more of your thoughts on the game. And let's get further in our coverage. Seattle by Night is back with PAX specials. There were two streams live from PAX. The first one, which had the announcement with Aaron playing Tolly, and the second one that was a full length actual play stream. And you can watch them right now on PAX 2 and PAX Twitch channels. They're going to be available later on YouTube in a more accessible way, because right now we have to actually scroll in the video to find exactly when they happened. But if you want to check them right now, well, well, I recommend it, especially if you want to know more about the story and the background behind Bloodlines 2, because the action of Seattle by Night has moved from outskirts of Seattle, from Tacoma, from places around, into Seattle proper. And this actual play does introduce some characters that you will see in the game itself. So I really hope that you will pay attention, draw some conclusions, and uh, get to know more about um, the characters that will be in the game. Totally, of course, you know already you've seen in the trailer, played by Aaron in the very first actual play we did on PAX 2 channel. And on PAX, you will see some more. Hmm, I wonder who that is. So Jason Carl did a wonderful job uh, storytelling this. There was a lot of laughs. There was a lot of fun in the audience. And uh, this is going to be available on YouTube as well. So stay tuned to our social media for the links. I will share with you as soon as the episodes drop. Uh, but we do have some more news from PAX. Vampire the Masquerade Clans of London was announced with an early announcement, but this announcement actually came with the playable build that people could play when they visited our booth at PAX. And I know how it feels. A lot of us live very far away from Seattle and we're not able to be there to check out what exactly this game is. But don't worry, I was there and I will tell you because <laughs> I played a lot of this game. I actually spent most of my breaks, uh, especially in the last day when things got a little bit more calm. I was just sitting down on the tablets people who were around the booth they saw me just being like, mm -mm -mm -mm, clicking and playing uh, so i can tell you more about this one so this is a new announced game from uh, well played games and it's a mobile card game that is meant for both tablets and mobile phones uh, this is actually a very first proper mobile title that vampire the masquerade is going to have and i'm very happy about that so well i was able to test three different decks which are available in this build. What's more, I was also able to play in multiplayer. It was really cool because the game was available already both with the AI opponent and with the multiplayer factor. If two people on these tablets played at the same time, they were queued together and were able to play against each other. So I was able to fight some people in this game and, and win some cool matches, actually one of the developers too. 
So when it comes to the available uh, decks right now, they are clan based, but you can also mix and match. So it's a deck builder game in which you build your own decks based on the uh, cards that are mainly clan focused. And the uh, uh, available deck so far was the basic beginner deck, which was mixed. So there was some Bruja, some Gangrel there. I've seen a Ventra, I do believe. Uh, Toriator were definitely big on that deck. Some Ghouls as well. And the two pre-made decks that were available for like a more high-end play was Toriator and Hecata. And they were very interesting. So at first I thought... Toriador is OP and Hecata is a little bit underpowered. But light, later as I played, I kind of got into grips of how to play this game. And I uh, and I actually had a lot of fun playing Hecata. So I ended up playing Hecata the most. Toriador based their gameplay on trying to fuel their own cards the most. Influence their own cards in order to get more points on them. The uh, great... Because I've played plenty of, uh, of card games, but I actually haven't played any card game that had a, a grid like this. You have three by three, so you have three rows of three cards, and the placement matters. So where you place your card, uh, your card might affect the bordering cards, the X cards, uh, the, the, the cross cards around you, or the cards on your opponent's table. Bruja or La Sombra cards, for example, were very often attacking the cards of uh, another player, while Toriador was mostly focused on buff buffing your own cards. So if you had Toriador, you would buff your own cards and get powerful, influenced cards that had a lot of points. Hecata, though, Hecata was super interesting because Hecata based its mechanics on destroying your own cards. So there was a lot of cards which were hurting your own deck, uh, placing uh, modifiers on your board that would like actually uh, remove the health from the cards around you. And there were some cards which were getting more power the more of your own cards you killed. So my way of playing Hikara, if you want to know the little grits and details of the strategy, was to play a lot of cards which I could destroy very quickly, play some cards which were summoning raves that were very weak and not very impressive. And the other player was like, okay, you don't have nothing on me. You are pretty weak, aren't you? And then I would place the card which would get fueled by kills around me and I would kill all of the cards, get fueled and win in the end. So it's a really interesting sort of a... Uh, mix and match. The base of the uh, victory points and how it works is every single round give you some like a certain amount of victory points and uh, if you get 15 or above you win. So uh, every round is like the deeper you are in the game the more points you get per round and uh, it all matters when it comes to defeating your opponents. So I had a lot of fun playing this one. Uh, Hecara Torator available already in the pre-alpha build. We do not know yet which clans are going to be available at launch and uh, what is going to be the detail of testing launch or anything like that. That was a very early pre-alpha build uh, that well played actually made super quickly when it comes to development but it was already super fun to play. So I had fun, I developed some strategies, I was able to play against others and win. <laughs> uh, but uh, I really hope that more people will be able to jump into it soon-ish and uh, check out how the game plays because it, it is really fun and very clan driven as well so yeah uh, both in rivals and in other uh, games that you have from vampire Masquerade, where there's a lot of clans at play it is very important for clans to have their own identities and for them to you know feel similar if you jump from blood hunt to rivals from rivals to swan song and to bloodlines as well in the future uh, you will be able to understand what the clan is about right so this game follows the same um, sort of a baseline every clan is going to have its own play style and it's going to be familiar to you if you know the ttrpg so yeah clans of london i recommend keeping your eyes on it because i had fun playing it and uh, card games are fun we we need a vampire the great card game i know a lot of people said that already like a proper ccg and I think this might be the one. So uh, yeah, let's keep in touch with this one. Keep in touch with Well Played. You can check out Clans of London online. Subscribe to the newsletter if you want to know more. And let's dive deeper into PAX announcements. So on PAX, we had this beautiful Macomb bar in which I was a bartender among other bartenders which worked with us. And the Macomb bar, which you may recognize as a location from somewhere, I don't know where, uh, was surrounded by uh, these very intimate booths around and the booths were with red curtains around and there was a lot of uh, little, little surprises for people around. So uh, to give you a glimpse of how it looked in Seattle, you would approach here to the 
uh, to the bar and people were given some little extras from us. The main extra that we've been giving out people is a certain tattoo. And that tattoo, which we were marking people with on their hands, on their heads, sometimes on their foreheads as well, was the symbol that you can see in Bloodlines 2 trailer. Now, what the symbol means would be a huge spoiler for the game. So we're not saying yet. We just marked a lot of people with it. And we'll see what kind of a party they joined after the game releases. But you can speculate already. The symbol is available at the loose scene in Bloodlines 2 trailer. You can check it out and speculate on Discord or elsewhere what exactly it means. It kind of looks like an eye with some, I don't know. Well, check it out and let me know what you think. And we were tattooing this on people, so we left, uh, I believe, a few thousand tattoos. I was, I was responsible for at least hundreds of them. <laughs> so a few, few thousand tattoos on people. Um, we had the booth on the left with Milan Uprising playable version. Pog people who were on packs because they were actually able to play Milan Uprising with the developers. Jason Carl played as well, so you can poke him and ask him how the game was. Uh, behind this booth, there were playable demos of Vampire the Masquerade Justice, the new VR game from Fast Travel Games. Queues were large, so if you were on PAX, you were maybe not even able to join in, especially if you weren't in on Monday or a more relaxed day, because the queues were there all day. We had to close the queues uh, around 4 p.m. every day because they were just full. And uh, a lot of people were able to play Justice in its almost finished version. The game releases on November 2nd. So it's very, very close. Uh, it was really fun to watch people playing it. It's a game in which you are a vampire in VR together with all of the gory details as you have to catch people, you have to physically drink from them. So pull them towards you, drink from them, toss them away, climb, sneak, and do all of the cool stuff that the vampire would do in Venice, Italy. So the setting is also pretty cool and atmospheric. And um, yeah, it, it seems like a really fun game. The accessibility was also top notch. I saw a lot of people who came over with some various disabilities and they all seemed to really enjoy the game and uh, the game got placed on the accessibility factors. So kudos to Fast Travel Games for making sure uh, that was covered. And then on the right, we had both a very cozy, nice table and the couches for people to make their own Vampire the Masquerade characters and we helped them with making their own sheets, as well as the nice announcement booth for our partnership with Techland, Polish company responsible for Dying Light games and Dead Island, if you played that back in the days. So Dying Light 2 is going to have a collaboration, a cosmetic collaboration with Vampire the Masquerade, in which you will be able to represent your favorite clan in the game. We are going to share more about that in the future, but as for now, we can announce for sure we are working with Techland on this little cosmetic DLC for Dying Light 2 uh, for vampire fans to be able to express themselves in the world of zombies. Uh, it's a fun game, so do check it out and we're going to give you more info as we go. Justice releases November 2nd. We did show also clan of London, which doesn't have a release date just yet, but we're going to bring you more information about that as the time goes by. And uh, yeah, let's jump into the next news. Where of the Apocalypse? Hey, we have to talk about this one. Although we didn't have any news on PAX regarding Werewolf, uh, Renegade was busy working. When we were in Seattle, Renegade has dropped uh, a September month of Werewolf. In preparation for, War uh, for Month of Darkness, which is coming next month, you are also going to get some culty RPG materials for free this month starting with the character creation summary. If you're playing Werewolf, if you're planning to play Werewolf, if you have some friends who want to make their own character, this is a really cool resource. You know how much we like to help people in making characters. Book is fun, but it's more fun to have some kind of a very quick helper. We have a plenty of these for Vampire the Masquerade already, but this is, I think, the first one available for Werewolf. So you can download it for free from Renegade Store. It's a few pages that allows you to dwell very quickly into character creation and make it point by point. So yeah, I recommend to check it out, download it and keep the link because under this store link, you will also be able to uh, get more materials as the time goes on. Just go to Renegade store, type Werewolf the Apocalypse free or downloadable and you'll be able to find this one. And let's go to the next news. Speaking of Renegade. 
Well, Vampire the Masquerade Rivals has shared a really cool news post about organized play plans for 2023 and 2024. You can check it out all on vampirecardgame.com in the news section, but I will be able to share a little bit more about that just yet. First of all, most importantly, Renegade is partnering with Card or Carde.io. It's C A R D E.io. And that is the system for the tournament locate locators. So basically, you'll be able to locate your tournament, the closest tournament next to you, and see where to play Vampire the Masquerade Rivals. Next, there's going to be a lot of IRL tournaments happening uh, all around the world, really. Uh, starting with the Clan Clash season in 2024, there's going to be a Rivals League um, in the local game stores. So you, the game stores can actually order a Rivals League kit in order to organize that um, in their own premises so that's available worldwide you can check it out on uh, renegade page as well uh, there's going to be uh, one prince of the city that's the, the goal is to make one prince of the city event per month with about 15 prince events total in 2024 and there are already prince of the city events set up in louisiana spain and the uk and uh, they are going to be set up to finish 2023 so still this year uh, there will be also 2024 Rivals North American Continental Championship on Gen Con next year. So this Gen Con also had one, but next year on Gen Con we're also going to have a Continental Championship. There's going to be also Continental Championship in Europe and they are planning another one in Australia. Uh, so yeah, there's going to be a lot of IRL events happening around Rivals. I recommend to check them out. Vampire Wednesdays is not happening anymore. It's replaced by Rivals League. So if you're going to look for uh, playing through Vampire Wednesdays, uh, check Vampire Rivals League instead. And go to VampireCardsGame.com in order to learn more about it. In the news section, there's a lot of information about those IRL events. And speaking of Renegade, Renegade Con, it, con is coming during Month of Darkness, so you'll be able to check out more news, including a nice panel about bloodstained love uh, with yours truly, so I'll be able to be there with some really cool people and talk a little bit more about romancing vampires, because that's one of my favorite topics, obviously. <laughs> so yeah, I hope that you like this sum up of the news from PAX and sum up of the news uh, from Renegade as well. We're going to have much more to show soon. But as for now, I'm going to wrap it up and I'm going to move to the Q&A section here on the stream. Uh, please do not miss all the updates that were shared through PAX. Um, the most important ones I shared in this video, but you can also check out Seattle by Night Live on PAX 2 and PAX Twitch channels. There will be on YouTube as well in the future. We'll share it on social media. And uh, check out the articles from developers of Bloodlines 2. There's a plenty of interviews available in which they share more. We're going to share more information about Bloodlines 2 regularly. From now on, I can promise you that, so you won't be able to fall in the torpor for long because we will bring you news pretty soon. And of course, Month of Darkness is coming. Next month, October, is going to be filled to the brim with new World of Darkness content. From the 1st, the 31st, every single day we're going to have a drop, as every year for three years now. So that's our little tradition. I hope that you will enjoy it. And in the meantime, do not get lost in the night. I'm going to move on to the Twitch exclusive section. And for those of you on YouTube, thank you so much for joining us and see you in Seattle.